Hello everybody once again. For today's video, I have not a vintage laptop, but certainly an old laptop. This is a Gateway model MX6025. She's a Celeron M machine from around 2005-2006. I've had this for a couple of years. It's a perfectly good, very good working laptop. It's even got a good battery, and it's, it's a very nice uh, uh, example of, you know, uh, a Windows XP era laptop right before Vista hit the market. And I'm finally making the video of this thing because once I have this video all done and over with, this thing's getting boxed up and sent to my very good friend Alistair across the country, YouTube user BBC600. I'm giving him a laptop because last year he sent me uh, a vintage Sony portable radio from the 60s for me to fix because it wasn't working very well. And I did a recap on it and not only did not fix the issue, but it made it worse. And I just felt terrible for that. Um, uh, and I said, you know what, I'll make it up to you. Do you want a, a, a laptop? And he said, sure. I was originally going to give him the Acer Travelmate 230, a laptop that I've had in my possession for over a decade. I just got this uh, about a week ago. A family friend gave me this laptop after she got a new one. There's that. But uh, I went to check it out because I hadn't touched it in years and uh, the thing was in such a state of disrepair that I actually just straight up took out the good parts and tossed it. P horrible plastic, uh, the display cable wouldn't stay in anymore so the display would flicker and yeah that laptop was finally a mess after over a decade of my ownership so I tossed it and I said well you know what I'll give him this one instead. This laptop is like I said, perfect working. It's in great shape. Aside from some cosmetic signs of wear, it's a very solid working unit and a battery that lets it run for a couple of hours, which is amazing to me. So let's check this thing out. You can probably tell by looking at it, this was not a fancy laptop for its time. I don't know if it was among the cheapest laptops you could get at the time, but certainly on the very low end with that uh, Celeron M CPU, although I'm sure if you wanted to tear this thing apart, you could stick a Pentium M in it, get a boost in performance. But uh, it's a very plain Jane laptop, which honestly these days is, isn't a bad thing. It's less stuff to break. But you got the keyboard. Actually, I remember, I think if I remember right, I think, I have got so many laptops, hard to keep track. I think I replaced the keyboard on this. I think I got this with a keyboard with that either didn't work at all or some of the keys didn't work or what. And I got a new keyboard off eBay for like 10 bucks and threw it in and that was the ticket. So that's the only work I've ever had to do to this thing. And well worth it, I would say. Trackpad, mouse buttons. You get some LED indicators. Wi-Fi, this thing does have Wi-Fi, caps lock, number lock. Uh, optical drive activity and hard drive activity. You do get a widescreen display. This is the usual 1280 by 800, I think, with a, obviously a glossy display. And there's your stickers. Designed for Windows XP. It does not say Windows Vista ready or capable. It was right before that time, I think. There's the top. Around the back we have your power input and VGA. Around this side, two USB ports. We have a modem, 100 megabit Ethernet, two more USB ports. An SD card slot, a Firewire port. So actually really nice I.O. on this thing for being, you know, a low-end laptop. And I think that's a card bus slot. So yeah, really nice set of I.O. on this thing. Your two speakers are right there. 
headphone and microphone, two more indicator lights for power and battery status, fan vent, and we have a CDRW DVD-ROM combo drive. And that's all there is to her. So let's open it up here. Give it a turn on. Uh, we'll go into the, well, I was going to go into the BIOS, but I was too slow. So we'll let it boot up here. It's got 512 megs of RAM installed, and I think it's an IDE hard drive. I think probably 40 or 60 gigs. I don't know. I'll have to check. But we've got Windows XP booting up here, and I, I, uh, by his request, I've outfitted it with all the fixings to make it, you know, as modern and internet ready uh, as possible. Obviously, this day and age, you are putting a Windows XP computer on the internet at your own risk. You probably didn't hear that. Speakers in this thing are pretty typical. Um, but yeah, I've outfitted it with all the uh, fixings. I've got the unofficial Service Pack 4 installed, and I've got the last version, supported version of Firefox, and I've got a vast antivirus, which still does update uh, the Windows, the last Windows XP version from 2018. It's still getting database updates. And uh, yeah, I, I found all the uh, official drivers, and uh, everything works perfectly. I also installed Microsoft Office 2007. I was going to go with 2003, um, but I think my Office 2003 disk that I've been using for over a decade finally went bad um, because it would get halfway through the install and then just say that a file couldn't be accessed. Um, but between that and I figured for compatibility reasons I would put Office 2007 on this. Uh, give Alistair compatibility with the modern Office file formats. Let's open the start menu here. Let's just go to our system page. I think this is actually still registered to me, but I never did anything with this. It's still like a bare install of Windows. I did change the user profile name to owner. Yeah, it's registered to me, but that's all right. It's a very clean install. I never really used this laptop after I got it. So it's a Celeron M, 1.4 gigahertz, 512 megs of RAM. So, uh, yeah, she's <laughs> she's a pokey little system, even for her time. But uh, it is, you know, it's doing the, getting the job done and. Uh, yeah, everything works fine on it, including the battery. What's the battery say we have left? We have hour and 36 minutes. That is pretty impressive. So we'll see what this thing has for graphics. I think, not I think, I assume it's just got the standard Intel graphics of the time. Yeah, so it's got the Intel 82855GM chipset. So just your standard Intel graphics of the time. Broadcom 802.11g Wi-Fi and 100 megabit Ethernet. The modem is some crappy soft modem. And the audio is Realtek AC97. You know what? I think before I ship this thing to Alistair, I'll see if I can scrounge up to some RAM. I think I'll bump this thing up to a gigabyte before I ship it out to him. I think 512 megs just isn't cutting it. Obviously, uh, the stuff I've loaded on is using much more than that, and this thing's just running pretty pokey. That Hitachi Travel Star drive is kind of trying to do all it can right now to write stuff to the page file. So I'll bump the RAM up on this thing. I thought 512 megs would be adequate, but... Apparently not for a fully updated Windows XP installation with a with Office 2007. That's all right. Here's the bottom of the unit. She's licensed for Windows XP Home Edition. It says Gateway Model Number MA2. So I believe I may be wrong, but I do believe this was a generic design that uh, 
that was licensed to Gateway to stick their name on it and sell it because I did some research and what I came up with was some technical documents from a company called Quanta Computer and it was called the Quanta Computer Model MA2 so I do believe this was probably a generic design made by a company called Quanta Computer and then licensed to Gateway. Um, it fits with the, just how plain Jane of a laptop this is. I mean, besides the gateway name, there's really no... It, it's very identity-less, um, this thing is. The actual gateway model's right here, MX6025. Assembled in China. So, I have this thing turned off. I figure I might as well uh, see if I can change out the RAM. That's your mini PCI slot, that's where your Wi-Fi adapter will be, the hard drive's under here and then I believe both the RAM and the CPU are under here so it, uh, it's actually not too hard to change out the CPU in this either which is neat um, but let me get this thing open see if I can scrounge up some RAM, I forget if this takes DDR or DDR2, I'm gonna guess DDR which sucks because DDR is the type of RAM that I have the least of but let's find out. There's the cover removed, there's our 512 megs of DDR RAM, and look at that, you can change out the CPU right here. How nice were the days when you could just open up a door on the bottom of the laptop and change out the CPU. Now, well I was gonna say now you have to take the whole laptop apart, but I don't think socketed CPUs exist on laptops anymore. I uh, think once you, once you buy the laptop, you're stuck with that CPU. But, uh, nicer days were these. See if I can find some more RAM. There's a gig. Mismatched, but it'll have to do. Let's see if it likes it. I haven't put the bottom cover back on yet, but we'll turn it on, see if it's happy. See if we can get into the BIOS this time. Hey, look at that! Now, does it see the full gig? Yes, it does. Oh goodness, that was easy. All right, I wasn't even sure if I'd uh, if I'd if I'd find the RAM. Very nice. Okay, so here's the BIOS, Phoenix BIOS. Let me turn the screen brightness up again. I don't like how it resets the uh, it resets the display brightness to the lowest setting. I think there's a BIOS setting for that. It's because I'm running it on the battery, but. Uh, there it identifies the drives. Eight megs of video memory. I think that's just taken from the main memory. Reduce LCD brightness when on battery power. I'll go ahead and turn that off. I'll move that up too. There. Alright. See if this thing boots up any faster with a gig of RAM. I'm certain this thing can probably take two gigs. I don't know if you'd be able to squeeze four into this. It really wasn't until the DDR2 era when you started seeing computers with capable of taking that much RAM. So I kind of doubt it. Because I have a Pentium 4 laptop that i got to make a video of someday. And you can stick 2 in that. Actually, I think 4 gigabyte DDR SODIMs, or 2 gigabyte DDR SODIMs probably don't even exist. So 2 is probably this thing's maximum. Open up the task manager. Oh, that's much nicer. Okay, this thing really needed the gig of RAM. Let's open Microsoft Word. 2007 Oh yes, very nice. Excellent. I would have been I would have been very happy with uh, with something like this in high school. 
which was late 2000s, early 2010s for me. Hell, even my, uh, even my first few years of university, I could have gotten away with a laptop like this. Very nice, very happy. And now I'm happy that, uh, I'm going to be able to give it away to someone who will hopefully have fun with it. Because I just haven't used this thing. I used it a bit when I first got it, but it never really went beyond that. Because I already had a dedicated laptop, which was my Toshiba Satellite U200. Uh, but now that laptop runs Windows 7 because I have more appropriate dedicated Windows XP laptops, which are IBM ThinkPads that i got to make videos of still. So this guy is just sort of a big redundancy, and I'm very glad to send it off to Alistair, and I hope he enjoys it and gets many years of use out of it. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, taking a look at kind of an old but gold and uh, cheap but cheerful uh, laptop with me here. I want to say thanks to my Patreon supporters, their support helps me do things like buy a new keyboard for a silly old laptop that's never going to really be useful in the real world again. Um, and I really appreciate everybody else who watches these videos as well. I, I really, really do. I'll take this opportunity before I go to announce that as of a week or a week and a half before taping this video, I have purchased a new keyboard for the iBook, finally. Really hard to come by keyboards for clamshell iBooks. This keyboard I bought uh, is a bit of a risk. I bought it on eBay. It's coming from Australia, and the description was, Worked when last used. Yeah, we'll see about that. So I think it's hopefully going to come here in the next week or two. I really hope all the keys work. Uh, really hard to get fully working keyboards for clamshell iBooks, so my fingers are crossed, and if that works, then we'll finally be able to make a video of that. But until then, thank you for looking at this guy with me, and I will see you in the next video.